Jesus, it's hot today. Should we go inside? Ah, oh, nice, cool, darkened room. Should we uh, heat it up a little bit by turning all this computer hardware on? I think we should. Okay, now the reason I've come inside is to show you this. And this is an old school desk. And when I say old school, I literally mean old school. It's from a school and it's an old desk, a computer desk. Now why this desk is so <laughs> incredible and nostalgic to me is because these were the sort of desks we had in the 1980s and the first desks which had on them the BBC microcomputers. You know, we were like, what, seven, six, something like that in school and they presented this amazing digital piece of technology on a desk and you could do things on this piece of technology. You could use a turtle to map out a big drawing on the floor using the logo software. You could draw pictures, you could write text, you could play games, and this was all in school time. It was incredibly exciting. And this was one of my first experiences of home computers, of computers in general. And in the 80s, it was staggering. It was like, it's, it's a TV that you can interact with. And I'm not talking like going live where you phone up and Philip Schofield plays a game for you and you tell him which way to go. You could use it in real time. It was like fangled, magical technology and it really drew me in, along with my ZX Spectrum I got at home not long after, it just drew me in to this amazing digital world. And many other kids as well, and that's where we get most of the bedroom coders who made a lot of the games for the early micro scene in the 80s and 90s. Now, I'm not using this desk at the moment to put a BBC Micro on because I haven't got any to hand at the moment. Currently I've got a Commodore 64 set up here, but I'll be using this desk to show various computers over the coming months, hopefully years. And it's good for comparison purposes, as you can see, because I can stick two monitors side by side and have different hardware running at the same time. It's perfect for what I need it for. And you know, I'm excited for this desk because of a nostalgia kick from using the desks in the 80s, and also because it's ideal for what I can use this for and what I can bring to the channel by shoving this in the corner and using it to house retro hardware. Anyway, let's take a closer look at this old school desk. Okay, I've taken my sunglasses off and I can see again, everything is beautiful. Oh, I'm gonna piss off some Spectrum and Commodore users here, aren't I, by chucking a Your Sinclair magazine on the Commodore 64. I think I'll just pop that over there. So this is the desk. As you can see, we have a top wedge, a top shelf here, which can space two monitors side by side. So you could have two machines set up potentially, or this was used for putting disk drives over here and you had the main monitor over here. And then down below, we have quite a lot of space. And this is important, you know, quite a lot of depth to these desks. I like a good deep desk, baby. And that goes quite far back so you could house stuff under there you could even house uh, base units I've put this uh, compact 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 de um, desk pro under there it fits nicely and also this PC1512 can fit underneath and the monitor can fit on top so it's perfect for so many purposes we've got metal legs here nice and durable a uh, MDF surface here coated lovely job as we have up here as well it's all very sturdy and strong and we have it on some nice roller wheels which is fantastic for moving about I love everything about this desk it's just so it's literally old school it's the ultimate old school retro desk so I've got the Commodore 64 set up at the moment see the tape drive sits there nicely next to it if we just pan out for a bit of a oh yeah it's a nice desk you've got there, man. Oh, thank you, yes, yes, I got it myself from school. It didn't cost me anything, oh, nice. I've got another desk next to it, and that's just uh, storing stuff at the moment, like the Commodore 1571 disk drive, stack of old input magazines and things, some old Star Wars Dreamcast down there, lots of things, and there's an Atari 7800 in there. Now, what would be more suitable for this old school desk is probably the Acorn Electron, because that is a very close relation to the BBC Micro. Let's 
see how far I can get back here. Oh yeah. So I'll be using this to uh, put machines side by side for verses and comparison videos. And this is a standard TV. It's a Bush TV, but it's got an RF input, which a lot of systems need, obviously, from the 90s and 80s. Uh, this is an old... The BBC used this as an old monitor uh, in production work. And obviously it doesn't have RF input, it just has uh, composite input uh, BNC connectors and the like. But it's got an awesome picture on it, absolutely superb. Alright, um, let's see, let's get the Acorn set up and see what that looks like at home on the computer desk. Alright, so I've got the Acorn Electron set up and I've actually got the Commodore 64 running on the monitor next to it. Oh, it's a thing of absolute beauty. This is, this is like my dream, my dream from my childhood. Multiple machines, multiple monitors, I don't know what I'd do with them, it's just cool to have them running. Alright, let's see. Oh yeah. P R I N T. Print, baby. Print. Hello. Return. Oh, yeah, that is exciting stuff. Kind of. Yeah, yeah, it's exciting. Oh, look at this. Next to the Commodore. Not quite rivals. Really, this was a rival to the Sinclair Spectrum. The Commodore was also a rival to the Sinclair Spectrum. This. Ah. Uh, I guess it was competing with the Commodore 64 as well, but it didn't really come close, did it? There was manufacturer problems, and it didn't make it into the shops on time, unfortunately, for Acorn. I think it was supposed to be in for Christmas uh, 83. Oh, it didn't make it into a 84, I believe, and by then, the crash was happening, and it was all a little bit too late for Acorn. But they tried, they tried to break into the games market, and they eventually did sell all their stock of Acorn Electrons if a little too late and for a bit of a cut down price, leading to Acorn getting bought out by Olivetti in 85 or 86. And then it kind of carried on a bit, created the arm chip, you know, I did quite well after that. The arm chip did reasonably well, I suppose. You know, it might be the biggest chip ever in the world. Not literally in size, but it's in many, many devices, including many phones. Anyway, I just wanted to show you this desk because I am very pleased with it and you can expect to see this in quite a few future videos. Oh yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you soon.